All right, folks. Ah, howdy. How you doing, Dan? I'm all right, mate. Uh, Reading, good, still. Good to be back in the yeah. tune-in tone-up studio. Yes, yes. Well, the, the <laughs> tune-in tone-up studio. A room. Yeah. The room is good. The room works. Yeah, it's good. It's warm today, isn't it? It is. Incredibly warm. Close as you like. So, um, I've brought to you today uh, this idea, basically. I'm running a little short on time and would like some guidance, some thoughts on maybe kind of revisiting that podcast from a couple of lessons ago on two guitar parts. Mm-hmm. But literally some help uh, in the parts that I'm playing on my um, for my gig with my band, yeah. if that's cool. Absolutely. Um, well, we, we had that podcast on, on sort of looking at two guitar parts and where do we go with that? Because sometimes songs are written with more than one guitar part and sometimes they are not. Yeah. Um, and, you know, although we, we often think of bands getting in the studio and sort of layering things up, which can happen. Yeah. Um, doesn't always happen. I mean, I know when Pantera used to record, they literally used to drop the rhythm guitar out when, when Dimebag took a solo, because they're like, well, that's what we do live. Yeah. So that's what we're going to do. Yeah, yeah, okay. You know, so everything Keeps happens. it close to the... What, what's actually going to happen. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Now, there's obviously, there's two ways of looking at it. One way of looking at it is, hey, man, it's a studio album. It's not going to be the same as a live show. Mm. So we're going to create you know, a masterpiece of the studio. The other way of looking at it is, well, yeah, like you say, it is true to what people would experience when you're going to see the live yeah. band. But either way, you can find yourself in a scenario where you are writing parts Parts that do not yet exist, you are finding something to shoehorn in there. Yeah, yeah. Which won't stamp on everybody else. Yeah. And will complement and not tread over everybody else, but will work. Yeah. So what's your first up? Oh, we've got a few shout yeah. outs to do, I see. Oh, yeah, we do. Yeah, yeah. There's quite a few people that have been commenting or sharing mm. ideas or possibly even liking. And if you haven't, um, just below, click on the like. Cheers. <laughs> Go on YouTube, subscribe, tune in and tone up, hit the subscribe button, and of course we will get our videos straight to you the minute they're, they're sent out. And uh, uh, maybe if we start with Rick Tangora, actually, because, uh, and thank you, Rick, I uh, hope you don't mind us giving you a shout out, but you literally get everything. He loves that, it. Yeah, he really he, does. He loves it. And, and <laughs> I've got to say, uh, he gets it, you know, he understands yeah. what we're doing and how it can be useful. He said, right. um, you know, that uh oh he said some lovely things about you being he such did. a monster player You're too kind yeah it was awesome You're embarrassing but also that you know that uh having me here to slow down down a little bit if you like <laughs> and go over the techniques in detail once he's got a guitar on his lap that's how it works for him so thank mm. you very much rick it is really it's a portal into somebody's guitar lesson isn't it really yeah that's how you know, tune in, tone up was born. That's how it works. That's what it's all about. So it's not really about me sort of blowing licks and showing you how, how great they sound. It's, it's really about what does one person need from a guitar lesson? How can we show them? And how can other people maybe benefit from that? Yeah. Um, we don't get paid to do this, folks. We do it for the love of it. Yeah, and if you want us to... If you um... want us to get paid, we're not going to say no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Go to, uh, just get in touch and we'll find ways. But no, jokes aside, uh, we also have been talking about possibly going back over all of our old podcast episodes, collating all of the exercises, licks, riffs and rhythms that we've looked at and doing a couple of episodes to revisit and revise them. I think that would be a really good idea. I kind of want to do it because I'm a sadist and uh, want to spend my evenings doing it. But <laughs> Crazy fool. <laughs> Crazy fool. But, um, yeah, uh, if you want us to do that, we're we're looking for some more messages and uh, some more thumbs up. But we're we're getting close now, so thank you very much for those who have joined us in the relatively recent past. Um, I will say, if you haven't been with us from the beginning, you know things have changed a little bit in terms of sort of what we've tailored towards our listening audience and towards what you want. Um, and we started off way back when, a couple of years ago with some quite style-specific videos, uh, which may interest maybe more of a niche crowd, but they got us started. I think our very first one was on the neoclassical guitar style. 
So After the blues one, but yeah, yeah, yeah. So we were we were looking at sort of so it's fairly early on. We were looking at sort of the Ingve Malmsteen sort of neoclassical type thing, um, which we thought would be quite an exciting and and sort of varied. You know, add a varied spin on on what we we do because it's not just another blues lick. You know, something very very style specific. We also looked at country as well. We were looking at the playing of people like Brad Paisley. We've done style files on people like Eddie Van Halen and Slash. So we've done all sorts of things over the last couple of years. <laughs> so maybe just sort of spool through and see yeah, what you yeah. like. <laughs> There's about 40 lessons that are just audio and the last 12 or so have been uh, using videos. So. I mean, we're not asking you to like, watch 70 hours of tuning tone up. But no. if there's anything you see that you kind of like and you think, oh, that could be a cool subject. Yeah, or yeah, yeah. Maybe you know, let, you know, show us what was in that video. Show us the best of. Yeah, that's maybe what we'll I'm hoping tune for. Up. Turning tune up best on. Yeah, sounds good, Dan. A couple more tips. shout outs. There's David Schmidt as well. Thank you, David, for your continued thumbs up all over the place. Same with Colin Spurt as well. Um, Ram Kirti has been in touch and loves what we do. So thank you, Ram. Uh, there's also um, Carlos, our old friend Carlos, and Tim Carlos, who's watching. Yeah. But we get th- literally thousands of listens and we don't hear from the vast majority of people. So uh, do get in touch. Do. Yeah. Uh, do ask us questions. Let us know what's good, what we can work on more. We can. Uh, we, we we're looking for any criticism, constructive or whatever. Really, yeah. And I will. I will say too. I'm going to stick my neck out here. Yeah. If there's any of uh, the guys listening who may be sort of, I don't know, trawling through YouTube in the early waking hours, any sort of professional guitar players out there. Um, of some note who want to be, you know, interviewed in our studio, get in touch. Yeah, you know? absolutely. We can organise something. We can do stuff yeah. by Skype. Yeah, right. absolutely. We, we've already interviewed um, Chris, haven't we? Chris, Chris Green Chris of Green. Furion and currently of Taiketo. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So if any, any other guys sort of want to get on that list, um, even notable local bands to Brighton who, who yeah. may have something to add to the guitar community, Get in touch with us. Let us know. We can Skype, and maybe your your input might help. Yeah, cool. Fledgling player. All right, so <laughs> I, I was going to ask you about my... Thank you very much, everybody. Yes. Uh, I was going to ask you about uh, my parts for the songs. Um, there's a couple that I kind of know a little bit anyway, which is American Girl and Cinnamon Girl. Lots yeah. of the girls. Um, so a Please. song that I'd like to look at because I haven't had a chance to yet. The other guy's playing the Johnny Marr part, the kind of riff all the way through. Anyway, I think he's got that down, so that's cool. Uh, but that's uh, What Difference Does It Make by the Smiths. Mm-hmm. Um, then there's uh, several solos as well, if we have a chance. The solo for Substitute, which I think is quite easy. I think it's just a kind of pentatonic thing. Okay. The solo for the one I love, if I'm doing that, I can't really remember. Might be Tim. Uh, and <laughs> I should probably know okay. this before tomorrow. And the so end solo for Bad Company. I've got the first middle solo, but the end solo is another pentatonic type thing with a bit of Dorian or something like that thrown in, I think. But we'll see. Okay, so where do you want to start? Um, shall I show you what I'm doing for American Girl? Yeah, by all means. Cool. Um, right, so you've got the whole uh, by Tom Petty, of course. Uh, we've got the whole uh, major chords where it's going. So you've got this uh, like 16th note thing going on. Over that, you've got the bass kind of doing this. Do you know the song as well? I'll tell you what, I'm going to look up the songs. Yeah, here on my iPad. So I can hopefully use... YouTube won't overhear and block us. <laughs> hopefully not. So this was American Girl. American wasn't it? Girl, yeah. So and then uh, over the rest of it, while it, while that's American loading boy. it, I'm doing. So I'm hitting over the D. I'm hitting D there. Then G, uh, over it the is. E. That's all chords there. Yeah, that funny D. There's the bass. Twice. Jeez. 
So I'm playing. Look at that high note. And I just carry on with the high notes, but who doesn't? So, the other guitar player that you're working with, our good friend Tim, yep. is he doing the sort of fairly sort of down the He's doing something like... That's what he's doing for that and what bit. What about the other bit? And then for the other bit, I think he's just playing here, playing short, and then he's E7, and then G, and then A, and D, and then E7, and then A, and D, and then it's those on the A. But if you look at that first bit, over that, I'm just going, so over, and then over, and 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 over, Just, um, so really, that's the section that you need assistance yeah, with. I've never really ri written yeah. that bit. I just have been doing this. Hang on, what was it? So that high bit is being played on the record, yeah? No, I don't think it is. See, what I think would sound more continuitous. Yeah. Is that a word? Well, it'll do. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Have more continuity. Yes, that's it, yeah. yeah. Dan's wife makes a very good coffee thanks. <laughs> Rather than go the really high note at the end, I think it sounds quite nice playing the notes different sort of inversions you could put a high E on it but you're using the major third instead yeah yeah and it just kind of throws the ear a little bit because the rest of the bit you're doing that you are using the um, fifth oh, yeah. the fifth yeah and then there third and you can play off the sustain four as well that's yeah. nice yeah you could even another another spin on the same sort of thing is adding the note on the G as well It could be like that. Could... So 
something like that. Or, yeah, well, I mean, I'm trying the, to remember the high year, yeah. In the sort of spirit of the 80s, you could even have a nice big wobbly chorus on it, you know. <laughs> This is this is throwing the cat amongst the pigeons. Right. Yeah. That might be something to come to after the rehearsal. Right. But yeah, I'll come back to that when I'm when I'm editing. So all I've done like is that. instead of sitting on the, the D shape there, it's yeah. gone for the same shape as all of the others. D here. Right, that shape. Yeah. So 9, 10, 12. But... Yeah, it's then, starting your new D, and I'm there. Second bit, okay. which then goes stays on the A. Yeah. Back to D. So far, all I've done there is I've just stuck with the same thing because it's like. Should we have a listen? Let's yeah, okay. have a listen. Yeah. The reason I suggest chorus, and I'm going to sort of put these up shimmer it. in as we go, shimmer it out. <laughs> it's sort of indicative of the 80s. I'm presuming this is an 80s song, Petty Tune. Mm, yeah, it's, early, it's an earlier one, yeah, so it would be probably the 80s, yeah. Okay. If not, if not even. No, it's 80s. So, I mean, the chorus would kind of like work with that. Mm. You know, effects can add something something to a song. Yeah. You know, sometimes we have the effects which are tonally altering. Yeah. So, effects like a compressor sort of alters your tone a little, it makes things sustain a little longer. Yeah. It sort of evens everything out. A wah wah alters the tone. So does a clean boost to a degree. You're altering the, the tonal end of things. You're maybe allowing some more distortion or, or yeah. it can be used in the loop for more volume. But then you get the effects, which are sort of modulations and things, which aren't necessarily messing with your tone. But they're actually sort of effects in themselves. So they're actually kind of sort of affecting your signal, not in a, a fairly... It's hard to explain, but not you're more in sort of a modulation and a delay kind of a way, maybe a more dramatic way. Now, some of those we can use in a very undramatic way, like a splash of delay. Yeah, doesn't necessarily mean that it has to be kind of echoing for the next twenty five minutes. Yeah, but a splash of delay to add a bit of depth. Yeah, very mild chorus to add a bit of width. Yeah, so those sort of things can be sort of enhancing your overall sound but also some effects are very indicative of, of the time mm. so like big reverbs choruses really clean digital delays very sort of indicative of the 80s and especially the late 80s yeah yeah when you think of the 70s i'm thinking wah wah phasers fuzz yeah all that sort of thing we we'll yeah. get back to the 50s, look at the reverb tremolo tape delay yeah you know they're very much of a time yeah and sometimes that can kind of do something for you. You know, when I'm, when I'm playing uh, Money by Pink Floyd with my, my own band out live, I use an MXR Phase 90. Yeah. Because it's, you know, you hear it and you just go, that's the 70s. Yeah. 
And it just kind of fits in with the whole vibe of it, you know. Just adding that swirly cool. swishiness. So I'll it's give that a shot, yeah. something to think about. Mm. You know, what could I use here which might enhance? Mm. Yeah. Reverb as well, or just... I mean, if you're going to use chorus, you just, just use chorus. I mean, my reverb's but pretty much always on. Always on. But I've got a reverb pedal as well as the reverb on the amp. I mean, sometimes um, if you've got, you know, if you've got a reverb pedal, you've got the Hoff, haven't you? Yeah. The Hoff. <laughs> yeah. The Hoff. The Hall of Fame. <laughs> um, the Hall of Fame Mini. Yeah, I mean, it depends on the kind of reverb you want. Yeah. I mean, I would, you know, when, on my, when I had a reverb pedal just doing the reverb side of things, I had two sounds stored in it. It was Strime and Blue Sky. Yeah. And one of them was a Shimmer reverb, which I really love for special occasions. <laughs> and one of them nice. was just a standard like hall reverb. So if your amp is taking care of the standard hall reverb, maybe use your pedal for something a little bit more special. Yeah. I use it on comfortably numb because it adds an almost well, I always used to use it on comfortably numb because it added an almost keyboard like sort of sparkle and Set it flying off around the room, doesn't well, it? Yeah, 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 it's a very sort of spacious sound. Yeah. So let's have a listen to this next one this song. It's uh, just before that. That's just stays on A. Second time through those four chords we were looking at. Okay. And here it stays on the A and we've got the other bit. Right, it's quite sparse. Yeah. So probably what I would choose Maybe to do... Maybe duck out? Because I think Timmy's covering a lot of the arpeggiating stuff there. You could either duck out, although I don't think you don't necessarily <coughs> have to. Mm, yeah. Maybe play the... <laughs> Need that hot notes. those high notes though, does it? So no. it's, um, That's it. this A and then you hear it sitting on that A as a I think that sounds quite nice with a kind of maybe or maybe not quite that high just hits it that's into the next bit now You're right with all that. Yeah. Whenever you're adding something to a song, or you're in the, you know, in the position, I think we've all been in the position of being the other guy. Yeah. Yeah. In every way. Yeah, 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 yeah. But being the other guy, you know, the, the guy that, you know, the, the other blokes worked out all of the parts yeah, and you're the other guy coming in after he's worked everything out. And he's got it sussed, and now you're trying to make space for yourself. Yeah, which never existed before. Yep, yep, yep. yep. I would always kind of go with the those kind of less is more thing. I know Ingvay disagrees with less is <laughs> more. <laughs> did, you, did, you, did, you, did you hear what you said about that? No, no, I'm no, sure it's semi tongue no. here. Well, I don't understand what uh, less is uh, more. Less is more <laughs> is I don't make no sense. Or surely more is more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like that. It's probably yeah. made him sound like a Spanish drug dealer. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, more is more. I don't make yeah. no sense. <laughs> it doesn't make no sense. <laughs> Yeah. But yeah, sometimes less is more in as much as you don't want to be clouding the mix. Always mm. ask yourself when you're playing something to a track, am I adding to it? Yeah. Am I making it more exciting? 
am I making it better to listen to? Yep. Am I making it sound better as a band? Yeah. You know, am I making us sound better as a band? Or am I treading on people's toes, constantly getting funny looks from people mm. when my guitar part is clashing with everything else? Mm. Am I clashing with the vocals? You know, sometimes playing something fairly, you know, as you as you say, either duck out or, or something sort of fairly yeah. low in the mix doesn't hurt. Yeah. Okay. You yeah, know. no, that's cool. You notice things like pad sounds and stuff on a keyboard don't tend to get in the way of anything, really. No, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah they just yeah. sort of sit there. Um, sometimes using your effects like your delays and things of that nature and maybe sort of letting chords ring, delay, whatever. Yeah, that might work over that, A. It might just yeah. be a kind of... With a bit of chorus on it or something, in there. Yeah. I mean, some, kind of some, sometimes you, you, you need you need this restful vibe and sometimes you don't. I mean, it's like, I when I play comfortably numb with a band, because I've got a big sound, which is almost keyboard-like because of the sounds I've chosen. Yeah. So the guitar with a kind of like, there's almost like a, a halo around the sound. For the rhythm, this is all I play. go the second time in the second verse I move up yeah and that's all I play yeah, spacious isn't it because yeah. the effects are filling out a big amount of room yeah I don't need to play anything else yeah okay there's no necessity yep yeah, I don't need to be strumming all the way through it. Gotcha. How unprofesh would that be? Yeah, yeah. So, sometimes... Yeah, no, that's good for that one, I think. Yeah. Okay, shall we move on? Let's yeah, move on. you might like Cinna- Cinnamon Girl. You like the part I wrote for this, I, I think. Okay. You like this. Uh, so, the whole riff goes something like... Um, uh, it's in drop D normally, so... Essentially, Tim's bit. Okay. And that's the riff at the beginning. Now, do you need no. distortion? Yeah, a little bit. Pop the button on your amp, and you should be raging like a ball. That's better. Forgotten it, so I'm glad. So this is what we're here doing. <laughs> so is this, <laughs> you say about with this one about sort of showing what you've got. Is it that you get a chance to give a good solo on this song? Uh no, not really. I just like the double parts there on that. Yeah, no, that's and, um, really cool. Yeah, and then on the uh, on the verse, it does this kind of. He's singing over that, and I've written this kind of. Uh, so 
close to essentially yeah. covering it all. Yeah. That so sounds I'll really show good. you a couple of. Uh, I mean, that's yeah. that's sort of right out of the Davis book of second guitar. Part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. <laughs> yeah, good. <laughs> Pretty much. I've I have had over the years so many incidents where I've I've played with bands that I've regularly played with. Yeah. Um, I used to play for a band called the Rock Pins, and I'm doing a few depth gigs with them this year. But when I was playing for them a few years back. And their other guitar player, the sort of main guy, was a guy called John. John is now working with country artist Liv Austin. I've not, I've not heard He's of him. He's up and coming. The guys out there probably have. <laughs> they probably, they probably have. And yeah, so just John, John's sort of doing that now. Um, but when he, when him and I were on gigs, yeah, because I always got drafted in as the other guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would have to watch him like a hawk. You have to make it up on the spot. Yeah, I don't like doing that. <laughs> you have to you have to watch the other guy like a hawk. And one thing about the bass player I worked with on Friday night said the thing that he was really knocked out with playing with the other drummer and myself was how much on stage communication there was. Yeah. And he's not talking you can't yeah. talk. Yeah. You know, it's not like sit down and have a nice cup of tea and tell me about it. It's not like that on no, stage. No, it's too loud. Can't even think. But the communication, the look, like we're going into this part. It's chorus now. Again, chorus repeat. Yeah. Yeah, no, I know. <laughs> <Literally. laughs> <laughs> you, you haven't, you can't even use your hands really, can you? Because yeah. you're playing. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you, yeah, you, you kind of like, you have some form of communication. Yeah. He was appreciative of the communication on stage. Yeah. And there is that thing, part of the communication is also looking at what other people do. It can give you an amazing set of clues. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes if you're in a song, like I always used to play the rock pins, we often played 500 Miles as one of our sort of oh, yeah. encores. Oh, it's yeah. a cheesy tune, but it has one funny bit in the middle after playing E, A and B for like goodness knows how long. It goes to C sharp minor. F sharp minor and then B before going back into the usual stuff. Yeah. And I could always tell, usually I can tell things from the words, mm. but I used to look at the bass player and I noticed that for the rest of the song he didn't look at his bass. And then he would get to that bit and he would glance at his bass and I could see him glance at his bass <laughs> and I thought, it's cool. Oh, here it is. <laughs> yeah. But those are the visual clues. Mm. When I was learning to drive, you know, I was I was I was told, you know, when you're coming up to a junction, actually as well as your flashing indicator, where you place yourself in that junction ready to turn also sends out a visual clue to everyone else. Yeah. Yeah. And so it it's the same sort of thing in music. Yeah. Now when you're when you're playing with other people, you need to keep tabs on what they're doing, especially if you're in my position where I'm I'm stepping into a gig that another guy's used to playing on his own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I have to look at what he's doing, clock what he's doing, and then be very, very quick to change tack almost immediately. Yeah. You know, we've had we had the odd song I once we were doing a gig and he started Sex on Fire. And I, I thought I'm, I was going to do the same riff as him, and I'm like, oh, crap, he's doing it. <laughs> yeah, 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 right. yeah. Well, I'll play Quickly. chords then, yeah, shall yeah. I? But <laughs> well, because yeah. there wasn't enough time beforehand with these gigs, you know, it's very quick fire for discussion and things. You just have to slip in and do the show. Yeah, yeah. I'm so, glad that's straight out of the Davis uh, thing. Absolutely. Uh, so, so, yeah, no, I've been so learning good. stuff. <laughs> so, so, for those watching this, Gary was sort of doubling the line, but much higher up. So, looking at yeah. the different inversions of the chords. Up there, right up there at the top of the chords. And then I was using octaves. Yeah, that's really cool. Very cool. Yeah. So yeah, so that's going to fatten it up and yeah, it sounds it sounds really good. Um, if you were using two really opposing guitars like Ying and Yang, yeah. Like he was bashing it out on a telly bridge pickup and you were bashing it out on a Les Paul or vice versa. Yeah. You would get an even greater separation. Separation and difference between the guitars. Yeah. So now's the big one, really. So what difference does it make? Um, Let's have That's the look. song. So, the Johnny Marr thing. Let's yeah. Have a look, shall we? What difference does it make? 
So, I mean, it's got... A, I mean, he's literally using a capo, I think. Uh, so here's the song. Yeah. I was thinking of doing... Just this. Shortcuts here, Dan. <laughs> so, I mean, the first bit, I think that's probably right, isn't it? Let's guess it. It's the top part. This will be a lot. Yeah, yeah. Two minutes, we'll know. Yeah. So you you could fret it out. Okay. So um, that's... what we could do is we could do a harmony on that one. Ah. <laughs> um. Kind of works. Um, yeah. Beat, beats the kind of. Oh, absolutely. Which is what I was literally going to go and do tomorrow. <laughs> Let's try that. Major version you want. Yeah. You could go on there. I'm not sure if that would work though. No, that sounds. The other one sounds much better. Yeah. I yeah. Think so. But uh, no, just over <coughs> the, the main riff. Ah. There's a couple more, so there's, there's a bit. I remember that now. That's okay. great. Cool. So that's one there's, possibility. There's Harmonise, um, folks. It can sound as good as vocal harmony. <laughs> yeah. 
Is it this bit? There's, there's the pre-chorus bit that we were just listening, cutting the end bit off just there, I think. We might have to remove this bit from the uh, YouTube one. It'd be annoying if YouTube picks it up, but... No, it's straight as that bit, isn't it? in that one uh, I don't think so I'd have to listen to the song properly yeah, there might be a solo but I think I really haven't done my homework have I on this one <laughs> So he does a little solo at the end. things were all the solos so we've got we've kind of got what difference does it make there um then there was a solo for substitute i think that's a really quickie all right let's, um, have, a, let's have a quick bash oh, on that. straight out of da- davis uh, book oh, of second on. parts as well do you know do you know um do you know the substitute riff where it goes yeah so both me and tim were playing that and it sounded rubbish Guitar riff, isn't it, really? Are you ready for what I came up with on Go that? Perfect. <laughs> isn't that great? Well, I imagine that worked quite well. With yeah, it, it does. It works. <laughs> something that either either sort of fits in perfectly like that or yeah. seriously supports everything else that's going on. Yeah, yeah, and that does sound good when it, when we're going together on that. Mm. But yeah, there's a little solo in that bit and I think it's just something... Is it just that? So I can't really remember it actually, something like that. That's it. literally it, I think. Let's have a look. Sorry, coffee hat. No, that's all right. Make sure it doesn't go... Cut. Have you finished it? I have. Good. <laughs> oh, substitute guys, that's going to be rough and ready, isn't it? All right, here we go. Thank you. 
literally staying on it, isn't it? Right, so with these solos, just mess around, doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, that's what you're going to say. <laughs> I just think, you know, why, Mr. Anderson, why? Yeah, I know. <laughs> Does he even need it? Get 15 seconds, get out of there. I would be inclined with something like that to either you could play it like the record. <laughs> Loading the mix. Yeah. Or, as it is changing chords... Go with the chord change. You could go... You could sort of do something like that. <laughs> something like that. Yeah, that sounds a lot better. Pete Townsend. <laughs> I mean, shredding on it's just like... Waste of time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I so certainly think that it wouldn't, it wouldn't hurt to maybe do something in the style of, but just add your own little thing yeah. going on. So just there to, yeah, it's sort of working right here. So come on, let's start there in position. Position five. Sort of the posi- what do you mean? Sort of, it's in D, in it. So, um. Oh, is it? That kind of thing. Yeah. Um, okay. I mean, if something calls. To be noisy, I'll be noisy. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, but I might expand on what's already gone before. Okay, okay. So, like, if I was playing Creep, for example, I could just do this. (laughs) Wooden tops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I used to play Creep, to give it that kind of over-the-top sort of Johnny Greenwood... Vibe, yeah. Yeah. Kind of this vocal. Yeah, that sounds great. So it's not really like my normal style. You're taking that wild kind of joint. So you didn't sustain the sus four. Yeah, so it's- Yes, yeah, yeah. 
And that's all about dynamics, isn't it? Cutting out and then really loud and really, yeah. Yeah. That kind of Mogwai. Do you ever hear Mogwai? I, I, I may remember them, yeah. Yeah, they're good bands. I mean, again, when I played that live, when you got the, the gunshot beats down, yeah. I never left the music, but one of the guitars started feeding back. So, like, harmonies. I didn't even, didn't even mean to hit harmonics, it just. I just want the guitar to have that kind yeah. of wild out of control. Drama, kind of feel. Like, Whoa. Nice, yeah, yeah, in cool. Your face. So in your feel. And so that's one way to do it, you know, massive vibrato and you know, not worrying quite so much about how tidy you are, worry about the, the vibe and the effect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because these things are just as important in their own way. You know, if we are shredding and we want to be precise with our our phrases and things and our picking that's an entirely different, different vodka, yeah. brand of vodka. Yeah, 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 yeah. If you're impersonating Radiohead, those things are slightly lower down on the sort of scale of importance. Right, if yeah. You, if you follow what I mean. Yeah. Like, if I was going to play a Green Day track, yeah, I, would, I used to kind of make my playing a little bit kind of rougher. Yeah. Yeah, it says... It's, it's, you know, rather than going, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd make it a bit more, a bit heavy. Yeah, yeah, you know, attitude. Precise. In fact, yeah. Billy, what's his name? What is his name? I can't. I can't. I'm, I'm rubbish on that. Billy Thingley Bob Watson. Yeah, yeah. Billy yeah. Barb. Should know that straight. But Thornton? No, no, no. no, no, no. no. Scratch that. <laughs> <laughs> That's a comedian or something. But the, you know the guy who Billy Thingley Bob. Yeah. I'm sorry, Green Bay fan. He he he's quite precise in a kind of punk rock way. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, with his rhythm, it's tight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's tight. And if you go into a studio, he's one of the guys that a producer might well ask you to emulate. Mm. It's that kind of track. You take something like Basket Case, it's really tight. Yeah, yeah, Shredder, he's not no. playing fast, but it's it's a different talent. This is what I think is really important to get across to every musician. I, when I had a lesson with Phil Hilborn, who's a monster player, he said, I try and look for the good in everything. Yeah. Doesn't matter whether I'm listening to a pop song, a dance song, a funk tune, a hard rock tune, a metal song, a thrash album. You know, there's talent in all sorts of things if it's done well. There's only mm. two kinds of music in this world. There's good music and there's crap music. Yeah. And there's nothing in between. Yeah, yeah. There's an awful lot of crap out there. There's stuff you can listen to. There's, and there's stuff you can dig deep. You can listen to. Yeah. Deeply, yeah. And there's also an awful lot of stuff. That, you know, I mean, stuff if it's manufactured, but it's done really well, can still be good. Mm. But, you know, there's an awful lot of pop, which I dare say is a little bit manufactured to the max. Yeah. Where it just feels like the, it's very cheaply done. Yeah, and that there's no thought in it. Yeah, and that there's very little musicality. It's yeah, sort of about the money, isn't it? <laughs> also tuned to buggery. And, yeah. yeah. At the end of the day, you know, you want to kind of try and get the maximum amount of music. Yeah. And the only way to get the maximum amount of music is to embrace all kinds of styles, but seek the good. Yeah. I've heard some amazingly well written pop. Yeah. You know, and it's and I've heard some amazingly well written blues. You think Gary Moore's still got the blues album was brilliant blues yeah, album. I love that. And the, unfortunately, sadly, you know, you often go to like some some of the maybe lesser open mic nights and you hear like the same old twelve bar murdered to death 
and you think, you know, you listen to sort of some of the Joe Bonamassa stuff and some of the Gary Moore stuff, and you, there's more to it. Yeah. You know, Peter Green stuff was blues, basically. Yeah. But had so much going on. Yeah. You know, every everything from interesting vocal and guitar harmonies to gospel chord changes and everything in between. Mm. You know, stuff can be done really cleverly and really well. Being creative, yeah. Or stuff yeah. can be done in a kind of meh. Kind of yeah, bosh, bosh it out, no fish. Thought. Bash a bosh. What, what is doing? the time? Oh, it's so good. So the what? Oh. Solo for one I love. Oh, right, yeah. But, um. The one I love? Head. Yeah. What have you got so far? Well, that's it. I, 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 nothing. Uh, nothing. <laughs> I, 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 we played that song so many times. It, I think Tim must be playing the solo for it, but I can't. I just can't. I can't visualise it. I think he is, probably. So we probably don't need to worry, but... So what have you got when you play it? Because I used to play this song in a band or played it about six Yeah, we, we've times. worked this out before, haven't we? Yeah, so Tim's doing the... Uh, I've done the rhythm thing before. Yeah. Uh, so, so the solo part, I'm not sure. I, I can't so the solo goes it. over your chorus. That's it. Tim's playing it, yeah. <laughs> so it's going over... That's what I used to play over it. That's that. Yeah, so I don't need to worry about that because I know Simple Tim has got that, but uh, maybe I'll just look at it just so I know it. And then it's just the end of Bad Companies, uh, Feel Like Making Love, that tune we also looked at before. Yeah, that's, uh, that's the one where we're going. Get jiggy with it, innit? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but you, if you, it plays out in this kind of. It's more more pentatonicy thing right at the end of the song. So you were going into almost like a Dorian kind of thing there. Yeah, I'm sure it's around there. We, I just haven't worked it out. It's on. Uh, it, it's. Uh, it's. Uh, so it, it's it could be your chance to oh, your chance to shine, Gary. No less. Yeah, okay. So if you play me the rhythm, can I play a few ideas and you tell yeah, me what you want to Yeah, what's he playing over at the end? I think it's just over the... Yeah. Da-dum, 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 isn't it? Let's get a bit of... Um... Oh, 
that mix of Lydian then that you were playing there? So, some, some and some. Some of it was straight oh. pentatonic. <laughs> something like that. 
So I think a song, you know, a solo like that could, could benefit from maybe a, a few sort of maybe faster rolling licks interjected with some of that. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks very much. No worries. See you folks.